Today we begin the one arm, one leg, merciless sea ice challenge. Now I can't say my title's that original, there's been quite a few before me. Two girls, one cup, two dogs versus one dog, one Chris Hansen versus one pedo, and many more. So with that ridiculous intro, let's just jump into the video. Joshua is a 20 year old spy with a bunch of really OP traits. And his main skills are shooting, intellectual, medical, and social. And if you'd like to read the entire lore behind Joshua, it's in the description. Alright, we have landed. We're gonna put up a little structure so we don't freeze to death. It's gonna be a little 3x5 made out of steel, because we have an abundance of that. The beginning design is based off of Ranamont's Sea Ice Challenge, where he did a 3x5 with a research bench on the right side and then a bed on the left with a campfire. So, shout out to him for that design. And it's complete. We have a fully enclosed room with a heating source. Then once he's warm enough, we're gonna send him outside to build a wind turbine, because we don't actually have that much wood. And we have a bulk goods trader from the Southwest Owlis. Um, I don't think they're gonna have much for me, because I just got here, so. So as I expected, the only real things that they have are that flop hat and maybe the parka. The parka would be great, but it's a little expensive, so I think I'm just gonna hold out until I get raided and, like, strip someone and take their parka. While Joshua was building the wind turbine, I'm just going to put some roof area down so we can prepare for when we upgrade the base and put the extra layer of insulation and cover up the stockpiled goods. I'm also going to have to go kill that polar bear pretty soon. I don't want him to eat all my food. He's literally sleeping next to my meals. Like, I'm killing him as soon as I can. It's going to be pretty ugly because I only have one arm and one leg, so I'm not really sure how he's holding a bolt-action rifle. I guess he's just forearm Jesus or something, but... Oh, polar bear's mad. Run, <laughs> run, 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 run. And just hit your shots. Great, the polar bear's dead, that was easy enough. And batteries are done, so now we're gonna research hydroponics and get some food going. I'm only gonna start off with two batteries just because we're so limited on steel. And I'm gonna need steel for hydroponics basins and an electric stove. I have to put the hydroponics basin somewhere, so I'm gonna have to upgrade the base a little bit. I wasn't even paying attention, we got a transport pod crash and a psychic drone low. For males, great, yay, thanks. Thanks, Randy. So the colonist isn't terrible but he's also not great and i don't even have the food or the space to like even keep him alive so i'm just gonna run up and take his parka and let him die in the cold now i'm gonna start planning out for where i'm gonna put the hydroponics basins and a sun lamp i'm gonna move the horseshoe pin outside because that takes up too much space we got to utilize every little square in our base and everything for the time being is going to be built out of steel just because that's the only material we really have. I am going to need a comms console pretty soon because that's going to be my only form of getting any resources. Because once it's too cold out, no traders are just going to like waltz through here. And I'm going to have to like kill raiders and stuff for my materials. Speaking of raiders, we have Danel, who is a jailbird. He's a pretty crappy pawn, so we're just going to kill him and not even try and save him. We couldn't even save him right now. Joshua was hitting his shots, thankfully, and the raider's dead. While Joshua was taking a nap, a rabbit walked up and drank some of the beer, so now it's passed out right next to a dead body. Now we have the option to accept a wanderer, and that's actually great because we can install a peg leg into Joshua, so that'll increase his movement speed a little bit. Unfortunately, we can't do a full like wooden prosthetic arm yet, but it's still a start. Now that we have two colonists, Joshua thinks we should name our faction, and I can only really think of one name, so... Just go with something basic. Joshua's beginning. Then we'll go with Icy Hellscape for the settlement name, just because it's the only thing I can really think of. While Theodore was operating on Joshua, a mad snow hare appeared, so I'm just going to restrict the door for the time being until the operation's done. Alright, we're going to draft Theo, and we're going to kill the snow hare. One shot, dead, easy. You know what? While we're out here, we might as well just go kill the alcoholic rabbit. Don't even have to shoot it, we can just walk up and cut it- oh! Not really sure why Theo shot the rabbit, but she's starting to get on my nerves. Yeah, food binge. No, we're not doing that. Yeah, you're gone. See you later. Thanks for the leg. Um, bye. Oh, we have some deer wandering through, so we're going to go hunt them sustainably. We won't kill too many. And great, we let one go, so now we can go repopulate with some mother herd. Now that we have an abundance of animal carcasses, we're going to make a butcher's table and an electric stove. If Joshua could learn how to, like, not botch the construction and actually save our resources, that would be nice. We'll queue up some simple meals now that the electric stove is done. I'm gonna put up a second wind turbine just because the sun lamp and the hydroponics basins are gonna use so much power. To further prepare for the hydroponics basins, we're gonna upgrade the base a little bit, make it a little more efficient and planned out. Joshua just got a debuff from a dead body, so we're gonna build some graves. Oh, it was good timing, because we actually have a transport pod crash right next to us now. His traits aren't that good, he's a great memory misogynist, so we're just going to bury him in our newly built graves. While we're burying Dan, a combat supplier is approaching. 
And the only thing I really have to sell them is this wooden club for not even one silver. So I guess I'll just get rid of that to clear up my storage. Oh, and we have some rare thrombos wandering in. That's pretty good timing because I have a good idea of how to kill these. All right, so Joshua, just stand right here and shoot at that one. And then run away super fast and let the combat supplier kill it. They're actually getting pretty messed up. We got one down, but damn, there's a lot of blood everywhere. Oh, one of them died. Okay, good. It's dead. I also didn't realize I stripped one of the faction members and we lost a lot of relations with them. At the same time though, they literally just left her there to die. So was I supposed to just like wait for her to die and then take her clothes after they're tainted? Soon after they left, we had another raid, which I handled pretty easily. He brought us some silver and ambrosia and hydroponics is done. So now we can start making some food. I'll queue up two of them right there. I just realized I haven't checked up on Blitz in a while, and she's about to break because I haven't fed her in like 10 days, so. So we're just gonna go ahead and break her bed just because I want her to get out of here. Oh, and she's berserking. It's fine though, because she's missing a left leg, so she's not that fast on top of malnutrition, so. But we're probably gonna have to end up killing her, so I'm not gonna get any relations back with them, but that's okay. And since this video is getting super long, I'm just gonna speed through the end part. We get a plague, we developed immunity, a transport pod crashed, then we got some wooden and steel slice caps from cargo pods. And then we got raided, which we handled pretty quickly. Then we got raided again, which we handled pretty quickly as well. Then an eclipse, which affects nothing. Then we got a psychic soothe for mail, a flash storm. Then another wanderer joins, so we'll accept them and see what they got. This person would be great for shooting in melee and constru- Oh wow, they're, they're really good, but like, I can't afford to have them. I don't have enough food for that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take their clothing and banish them. Then we got more cargo pods, which had human skulls. Interesting. We got the option to help a pawn by killing off one drifter. So we accepted that, obviously. They're incapable of violence, so I'm just going to use them as a distraction while Joshua kills the pirate. The pirate's dead, and so is the colonist. And we built a little fridge out of a limestone meteor. If you guys enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Leave me a comment. Tell me what you like, what you don't like. I'm open to suggestions, and thanks for watching.